Good morning, muffins. Wake up, babe. A new machine learning algorithm just dropped. So yes, last week, these homies at MIT published this idea called Komogorov Arno Networks and received quite a lot of praise along with decent criticism. Now I'm here to give you Didn't Graduate Guide to Komogorov Arno Networks. In short, CANs are neural networks where instead of training the weights, it trains the activation functions. It boasts better interpretability, lower storage size, which is amount of parameters needed for same performance, but trains slower and has not been validated much on large input spaces. Now, the authors are physics professors and students, so the paper focused more on finding functional representation and solving partial differential equations. Thus, a main criticism is that it is only tested on small input dimension amounts, such as vectors of 3 to 10 variables. But as a computational science enjoyer, I do see great potential of it in chemistry. All right, buckle up, here comes the math. We first start with the Komogorov Arno representation theorem, which it is named after. The theorem states that for any continuous multivariate function f that maps n real variables in 0, 1 to a real scalar, f can be represented by a set of single variate functions like this. To make it more clear, I will give a concrete example and expand the summation like this for the case n equals 3. Thus, the only multivariate function here is the addition summing them up and all other components in this representation are univariate functions. We can also write the equation as two matrices like this, which is also how the paper writes it. The elements in the matrices are functions, but not the functions as values multiplied to the vector. Instead, they are functions as operator that acts on the elements of the vectors. I swear, everything in physics is called an operator. Again, a concrete example. Notice the difference between multiplying and operating over these two lines. This here is what we're talking about when I say matrix of operators. Likewise, in a multi-layer perceptron, so regular neural network, the math operations can be written like this. The weight matrices are scalar values multiplied to the input, and activation functions are function operators applied. Then, to make a deep neural network using Komogorov Arno, we just apply more layers of these operator matrices. The original theorem corresponds to a kind of shape n, 2n plus 1, 1. And the paper tries shapes such as 4, 2, 1, 1, or 3, 5, 5, 3, where it is deeper or has multiple outputs. Now we can talk about what the five functions look like and how to train them. As mentioned, we're training the activation functions, but what part of it are we changing? Here, they are represented by B splines. Just think of piecewise functions of polynomials. What are we training here are these coefficients of the pieces. Actually, each of these five functions are a basis function plus a few B splines. The paper uses CLU as a basis function. They do this so the system is easier to optimize. The CLU function is close to the identity function y equal x in the 0, 1 interval, and the code initializes the B splines to have a range close to just 0 in the 0, 1 domain. So in the beginning, all the five functions are similar to just f of x equals x in 0 to 1. Just like all other neural networks, you backpropagate each parameter in each layer using chain rule to get the derivative or gradient, and then you can gradient descent away. Although the example code also uses an algorithm called LBFGS, which uses approximations of second derivatives. Think of something like running Newton's method on the first derivative graph. You converge to a zero of the first derivative, which is a local optimum of the original graph. It is quite a bit slower, but more stable. The package comes with methods to visualize the cons with little boxes representing the graphs of the five functions. 
As you train them, you can see them conforming to different function graph shapes. Now is the fun part, and also what the paper claims cons are good at. Figuring out function representation from a data set of inputs and outputs. Say we have a black box function with input and output data points generated by this function. The neural network does not know this and is trying to learn how to represent it using math functions. We first create a CAN model using the package the authors uploaded. We then train it with the input and output values like all supervised regression problem. It will optimize the coefficient of the splines in each phi function. And you can also call prune to remove redundant connections. Finally, you can call auto symbolic and substitute the spline with specific functions. It detects which symbolic function is most similar to the learned spline. Here, notice how our original function can be written as a graph like this which fits as a concrete case of the KA theorem representation. And this is the representation our Khan have learned, as it figure out the floor here is indeed made out of floor. Train it for a few more rounds to converge the constant coefficients to optimal, and you can export its function formula. And this is the selling point of Khan's. Imagine you have a data set for experimental measurement or complex simulations. You can use Kant's to figure out the underlying laws, which is the math equations that dictates this phenomena, similar to the law of gravitational force or ideal gas. Side note, even with just addition as the only combining operator in the computational graph, Kant's can model multiplication and division relationships between input variables just as well, although a few hoops is to be jumped through. And likewise, finding symbolic solutions of differential equations follow the same path. Find out what functions that, when derivatives are taken, satisfy the equation. But if I start solving PDEs in an extracurricular undergrad seminar, y'all will be in REM4 in no time. Now, however, I took the Getting Started notebook and tried playing with different functions. It seems that even a lot of the basic functions I tested with does not give a good result as I thought. Though I believe we can definitely make many improvements soon. I reckon the next paper building on top of this one should come out in a month, I guess. So yep, that's all for today. As a future computational chemist, I do see a lot of potential of it in chemistry. Now, tell me if y'all like these type of didn't graduate guides and if I should make more. Anyways, if you liked the video, hit the like button and subscribe to see more. See you nada!